I really enjoy sketching. For me, it's an important part of my daily life as an artist and one of the most important tools in my toolbox. I love that I can take a sketchbook with me anywhere that I go, whether it be on the train or in a cafe. I can just sketch whatever I want. There's an excitement I find in sketching, especially when sketching from life. I enjoy painting as well, and it's by far my favorite thing to do, but sketching is even more important. I know that the more developed my sketching and drawing ability, the stronger my final paintings become. I think that sketching should be a daily practice. You should think of it as a personal journal, something private that is only for your eyes and for your growth as an artist. I sometimes feel as if I have to create perfection at all times, even in my sketchbooks, when I know that really a sketchbook is supposed to be the one place that I can do whatever I want while not worrying about what anyone else thinks. You may find it helpful to keep at least one sketchbook for yourself with the idea of not showing anyone else. Sketching is a way for you to try new things, a way you can experiment. If you're having a hard time drawing hands, for example, fill up five or six pages of hands. This is a great way to solve drawing issues without anyone else needing to know about it. I often sketch the same thing over and over again. I have several different sketchbooks, different sizes, different papers. I enjoy sketching with just about anything, whether it be watercolor, digital, oil, acrylic. I like using pens, pencils, markers, whatever I may feel like using on any given day. People interest me the most, so I try to carry a sketchbook around with me everywhere I go, because you never know what kind of people you're going to see. There's all sorts of shapes and sizes out there, clothing styles, hairstyles. I can never get enough of the people that surround me in the day-to-day -day experience of living in uptown Chicago. Sketching people happens to be my favorite thing to do, and it's convenient living in a city. I can just walk anywhere and find more than enough interesting people to sketch. When sketching from life, I tend to notice things about people that I sometimes won't see or feel when drawing from a photograph. Sketching is a way to figure out how not to do something, a way to learn more about yourself as an artist. More importantly, drawing and sketching is fun and it should be fun. I think it's important when sketching and drawing how you hold your pencil. The most important thing that I try to do is to not draw as if I'm writing a letter. Hold the pencil loose enough that if someone wanted to they could just simply pull the pencil out of your hand. As I start this sketch you can see that my wrist is loose allowing me to move quickly so that I can put down the information I'm observing. When I start a sketch there's no harsh lines, I sketch really really light. When sketching you're looking for basic shapes, you're looking for triangles, circles, squares, rectangles. And when you start to sketch, whatever it is, it doesn't matter what it is, you want to look for the basic shapes that make up its form. So you can see here as I start sketching, I start first with basic light shapes, light lines, just trying to find form within the face that I'm, that I'm observing and looking at. I'm not drawing hard, I'm not pressing down hard with any pressure, it's just real light moving my pencil around. And that's the other thing, is my hand never stops moving around and flowing. My wrist is flowing. And I'm not worried about getting any intricate details. I'm not worried about eyes at this point. I'm just kind of placing the general position of the eyes, the general area where the nose is going to be, and the distance between the mouth, and the relationship between the eyes, the mouth, the eyes and the nose, uh, the chin. But it's all very basic, very simple. So when you're sketching anything, it doesn't matter what it is, it can be people, animals, cars, it doesn't matter. Look for a basic, simple shape. Look for triangles, circles, squares, rectangles. Not that you're going to find these exact shapes, but look for the general idea of those shapes. And then what you're going to do is you're going to simplify and you're going to try to expand on that. You might look at someone's face or someone's head that, that feels more rectangular or more square. So basically, instead of getting too consumed or too worried about their eyes and their nose and the, the mustache that they have or the hat they're wearing, um, just focus first about the basic shape that you're seeing. So they have like a square-shaped head. Block in a, a rough square-shaped head. Slowly put in the features where you feel they should go. But again, keep it light, keep it loose, and don't worry 
about anything else but the basic shape and the basic relationship. And what I usually do is squint my eyes so that I'm not focusing on the things that aren't important. You know, there's all sorts of different shapes of people. There's, you know, people will have long, tall, skinny heads. They'll have short, round, stocky heads. You know, there's all sorts of shape and form that you can find just in faces, let alone, you know, entire bodies or animals. So basically, just keep it loose, keep it simple. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to continue with shapes. As we were talking about earlier, it's important to locate simple shapes like circles and triangles. So I'm showing you in, in this red that, you know, the way that I typically see people before I start to sketch. And basically what, what I do is, again, I squint my eyes and I try to see the simple form, the simple shape, um, what makes this person more unique. And I'm not, again, I'm not focused on the stripes on his shirt, I'm not focused on the folds of his pants or the glasses or the facial hair, anything else. I'm only focused on the main shapes I'm seeing here. And then of course I'm also going to consider humor and the pose that I'm seeing with his body. Same thing we just did with the red. I start sketching that same shape and you can see the same shape that we just did with the red. Now that I've blocked in the basic form of what I'm seeing here, I start to go over the drawing now a little bit more detail. I start to, to kind of block in basal features, uh, placement of where I, I feel the features ought to be. But more importantly, um, because I'm drawing a full figure, you know, I'm, I'm considering more than anything the actual pose and the anatomy and how the head relates to the body. I'm thinking about the flow of the, the spine and everything all the way down to the calves and the feet. That everything feels balanced and is a good representation of what I'm seeing when I'm looking at Nathan. So I start with a simple outline, almost what you remember drawing or sketching as a kid when, when you would draw Bugs Bunny cartoons. You start with a simple circle shape and you slowly add the features. This is one way that I typically sketch, is I, I think about it, again, in the most simple terms. The one thing I do is I let my pencil just move around. I hardly ever stop. I hardly ever pause in one section, and I never stay too long in one spot. So I'm always moving around and always developing until it feels complete. So again, I'm going to go over this photo of me with red, and I'm going to show you the shapes that I'm seeing as I squint my eyes and look at this form. And in this pose, there's quite a slinkiness to my, to my stance, the way I stand. So when I prepare for this sketch, I'm basically keeping that in mind. You can see that slinky, snaky looking red line that I sketched there. And that's actually more important to me when I'm going to sketch this drawing. My torso is, is more like a narrow rectangle, and I, I have a lot more angles in my pose than in the previous drawing. So I'm going to try to think about all these things, but keep it, again, really simple. And so I'm just slowly and lightly sketching, sketching this out, and, and again, keeping the slinky aspect of it all in mind. So you can see that I've got the basic form here. I've got the basic shapes. And this is enough for me to build off of. This is all I need in order to do a, a final drawing. Um, so to finish this sketch off, now I'm going in closer and I'm looking at the details. I'm looking at how the nose relates to the mouth and how the mouth relates to the chin. And again, I'm not zooming in enough to be distracted by the details. I'm still pulling myself back and holding myself back enough in order to keep a nice, simple, sketch.
don't want to get too carried away with details. There's, there's really no reason to be concerned or worry about uh, mistakes when you're sketching or about erasing. In fact, um, I used to teach and I would do something my dad did to some of his students is I'd go around and rip their erasers off their pencils and they, they were not allowed to use an eraser when they sketched. And the reason for this is, is it's important, I think, to, first of all, to learn how to draw light enough, but secondly, to build a confidence in your sketching ability to not have to have any need for an eraser. And truthfully, sketch lines and sketchy marks here and there look cool and uh, I think add to the aesthetics of a sketch and what makes a sketch look good and look nice. So you can see that I haven't done any erasing, I just continue to build and build my sketch. And here's the final two side by side. And you can see in these sketches close up here how loose they really are with all the, the loose sketchy lines. And I enjoy all those lines, every one of them is great just as they are. In thinking about shape, watch how I sketch Stuart here. What I'm doing is I'm starting off, again, really, really simple with the, a round shape. And you can see that I haven't even drawn any eyes or nose. I start with the mouth. I slowly block in a chin. And you see his mustache coming down. I just do a few lines, suggesting his nose with, with the shadows actually first under his nose. And I just slowly work up the face. And then I put the eyes in last. I'm not worried about any detail. It's important to remember to not worry about the detail and just focus on what you see when you squint. Now if you squint your eyes and look at Stuart, you can kind of see the round shape that I'm getting here, the, the shape of the nose, the relationship that the nose has on that face and uh, the kind of eyes he has, the, the shape of those eyes. And really at this stage, it looks sort of like a kid drawing. It's very simple. There's no reason to spend too much time on that. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually finish the sketch painting. Um, and I'm not going to zoom in. I'm not going to use any little teeny brushes. Again, I'm not going to worry about detail. And this is one of the ways that I like to sketch with Photoshop is I use a big brush and I block in shape and form with values. So I squint my eyes at my reference, at my photo reference of Stuart, and I basically just look for the shape of tone and value that I see. And if you squint, you can see the lower part of his face looks darker, and so I try to match a tone you know, and a value that feels like the same value, and then I try to match that same shape. But of course, I'm doing this all within an exaggerated form that I've created. I'm just slowly sculpting and shaping and this time rather than sketching and shaping the sketch with line I'm sketching and shaping with brush strokes and brush strokes of value and tone. Think of it like a puzzle. One piece of the puzzle fits next to another piece so the correct value placed next to the correct value and value shape you're gonna end up having the correct form. But again, it really does matter and it really is important, the foundation of the drawing, that the sketch is strong. It doesn't have to be anything more than loose, simple lines like what I had, but it has to be accurate enough and strong enough. that I flipped the image horizontally almost like getting the effect of looking in a mirror 
And the reason I do this is because if you flip an image that you're working on, you can immediately see the mistakes. The nose might not look right, the mouth might not look right, cheekbones might not feel right. And after looking at it the normal way for long enough, your eyes get kind of a, used to it, but you can, you can tell that something's not right, but you can't quite put your finger on it. And this is something that I've been doing for years, and, and when I paint traditionally or draw it traditionally, I just use a mirror so I, I get the reversed image of it. And it really helps me to see different areas that, that need to be fixed. What happens is your eyes get used to what you're seeing, and, it, and as soon as you flip it, the errors pop out at you. So I, I tend to do that a lot while I'm painting. And painting digitally and sketching digitally, that's a, a really awesome tool because it doesn't take long to flip the image, and you can flip your, your reference around as well. Also, when I paint traditionally, I do tend to paint off of a computer screen. Even if I'm painting with oils or acrylics, I'll have a photo reference on my computer screen. And every once in a while, I'll flip my image on the screen horizontally, and I'll look at my painting in a mirror, and I can immediately see if there's something off or something that feels off. Another thing that I do often is I'll flip an image upside down, and it's the exact same reasons. My eyes will immediately see something that needs to be fixed. I mean, it's usually the one thing that's been bugging me that I, that I couldn't uh, quite grasp. Now the reason that I'm painting this without zooming in and I'm using large brushes is I don't want to get carried away in one area. If I was going to take a painting to a finished state, I would zoom in on, on the eye area, for example, and I would spend a good amount of time really detailing that eye, using smaller brushes and getting every little detail in there. But by painting from a distance like this, it forces me to look at the piece as a whole. It's important to step back and to look at your paintings and drawings. For me, this is as detailed as you need to get with a sketch, especially if you're going to do a, a painted sketch in Photoshop. <laughs> 